In 1607, give or take a year, a mustachioed man wearing a dashing ruffled collar sailed into a strange river in a strange land. He noted, quote, it is a very big land to fall in with and a pleasant for to see. His name was Henry Hudson. Now having a fine harbor, this new land soon became a center for the trading that went on with the old country. And today, some 350 years after old Henry Hudson started the whole thing, trade still flourishes in the city of New York. Several thousand items, give or take a few, are daily shipped out or in. Violins, snails, truffles, ivory, porcelain, people, watches, woolens, and so on. Salvatore Ruggiero, born in 1899 in the village of Nitanti, elevation 6,808 feet, population 796 souls. Once in 1921, when he was 22 years old, Salvatore Ruggiero left the village of Nitanti. For a week, he went to Rome. Now, 62 years after his birth, after 19 years of longing to see his oldest son in America, Salvatore Ruggiero has come to the Golden Land. So she says to me, three weeks ago, she comes to me. She says, I want to go to Hawaii. I says, go, go ahead. She says, uh, we're both going to Hawaii. We need a vacation. She don't let up on me. They want something they can get on your back. You wish you was never born. Next week, she goes out. I say, where are you going? She says, for my lesson. I say, what lesson? She says, my dancing lesson. I say, what dancing lesson? She says, my hula dancing lesson. Good luck. I'm married to a hula dancer. I tell you, boy. Can you tell me something, Joe? What's that, Harry? Why is it the older and uglier a dame gets, the more dope she tries to dig out of Hawaii. You know how much a round trip to Hawaii costs? I mean, not counting expenses. Olive should have had children, Harry. What'd you say? I said Olive should have had children. Yeah. And I should have had this fixed yesterday. Keeps blanking out. So be grateful. Olive starts in on you again. No soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be seeing you. Boy, you're all lucky. Yesterday afternoon at 3.25 daylight time, Harry McCoughlin thought for a moment of getting a new battery for his hearing aid. He would have had to go eight blocks out of his way. He was hot. Harry McCoughlin is now stone deaf. In Nitanti, where he was born, Salvatore Ruggiero lived at number 14 Via Santo Antonio, in a house 200 years old. Once in Nitanti, when he was dizzy in the middle of the day, Salvatore went home. But from this point on Mulberry Street, number 14 Via Santo Antonio is 3,859 miles away. Well, 
Somebody likes his jokes awfully early in the morning. Yeah, it sure seems that way. All right, I want you to tell me everything that's happened. Personally, go slow. Okay, I have it all here. The accident occurred at approximately 7.15 a.m. Right? The coffin was thrown free of the hearse. Contact with the curb knocked the lid open. Whereupon... Go on, go on. The whereupon is the important part to me. Whereupon the corpse, description, male Caucasian, age approximately 60. The corpse jumped up and ran down Mulberry Street. The corpse jumped up and ran down Mulberry Street? We assume it was a corpse, apparently. There are witnesses, of course. Oh, yeah, I have a list of right here. There's a Mrs. Antonia Risa, age 55, a housewife. As a matter of fact, she's right over there. You want me to call her? No, just read me some more of those whereupons. Uh, well, there's a uh, Joseph DeMora, age 9, schoolboy. Helen Cadwallon, age 32. That's the uh, truck driver? Yeah, his name is George Lantern. He just saw what all the other witnesses apparently saw. Uh, no, Mike, unfortunately, he was knocked unconscious. What about the driver of the hearse? Next trip he'll take in the hearse will be as a passenger. What's that? A oh, bag I found next to the coffin. Contents? Contents? No. One shirt, one shirt, razor, a pair of socks, and go chasing. Go chasing? What is that? Have you had anything like that, Mike? It's Italian candy. Goldari and Filios, Milano. Yep. Made in Milano. Italian coffin, too? I don't know. We better look. <laughs> Salvatore Rogero, Nitante Italia. Hey, ventilation. Well, it looks like Mr. Rogero came here from Italy by a coffin. This must be the latest gag on illegal entry. Submarine. What's that? That's what they call them, submarines. The trouble with this kind of submarine, it can go underground too. Okay, first thing I'll do is I'll check the immigration service. Adam, I want you to check and find out what ship this coffin came in on. I also want you to check and find out what mortuary owns this hearse. I did, Mike. It's registered to the late Mr. McCoglin. Well, that's a dead end for the moment. McCoglin, huh? Well, check out all of his relatives and friends and business associates. He must have a driver's license, permits, etc. Should be all kinds of paper on him. That's for you, Adam. And Frank, I want you to check with all your informants and find out if there are any rumors of a submarine being loose. I want Mr. Rogero. You must have loved your mother very much, Angela. I promise not to love you any less. We were just talking about how Mr. Venusi still remembers his wife. 20 years. Every year he still lights a candle for her. Well,
What's the matter, Papa? Hey, Mac, you think maybe she got off the boat already? No, I, I don't think so. Not yet. Hey, Mac. <laughs> You know, a young girl like that, she never laid eyes on me. Now when I get done a thousand times. Yeah, but still, I feel a little bit uneasy in my mind. Don't you trust me? I arrange everything. Believe me, my son. All right, you. Sure. You know, you never told her nothing about me. What you gonna say when she finds out I'm undertaker? What is she to say? She's your wife. Married by proxy. Everything legal. She can't back out now, even if she wants to. Look, I fix everything just like I promised. Stop worrying! Okay, all right, man. All right. We should have still brought a mother, you know? A young girl like that, she come all alone. Look, I couldn't get a visa for the mother. Look, it's all right. Believe me. Believe me. Come on. Hey, I think... I think maybe that's the sea. She's just coming over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good of you to be with me on this day of grief that I carry for my poor wife. Our daughter will soon be your daughter. And your son will soon become our son. And so we share your grief. And it is our pleasure to come with you to light a candle in memory of your wife. I feel the same way, Mr. Venusi. Thank you. Excuse me, wait for me in the car. I'll be right there. Okay. Thanks. What are you coming in here for looking like a bum? This is a church, not a racetrack. Dominic, please listen to me. Who did you give the job to? The Salvatore Ruggiero job? Uh, McCoglin. McCoglin is dead. There was a big accident in the street. The coffin bust apart and the old man is gone. Nobody knows where. Nobody's seen him. He ran away, and nobody's put eyes on him since. All right, so what are you worried about? Where's the old man going to go? What's he going to do? He's not going to do any harm. Wait a minute. If the police find out about this, there's going to be trouble. What are you worried about? We help an old man come into this country to see his son and his son's daughter and the children. The man had some trouble getting a visa, and we helped him. He's going to make his visit, and then he'll go back to be buried in the grave that he bought for himself. What's the harm? <laughs> this is the way you look at it. But how's the police going to look at it? Well, you tell me how the police are going to look at it. You're the smart one. You pull the strings. You got all the lawyers with the answers. Dominic, don't be a wise guy about such a serious thing. All right. All right. So they find me, so I pay some money. All right. I'm telling you, there's more to this than just a little money. I don't want to talk about this in a church, you understand? My son is here. The girl is going to marry her mother and father. You got no right to bring such matters to talk to me about in a church. Dominic, please, please look at me in a church. All right. Sorry. Now look. From the godfather of your son. And I want to remind you, I'm the man who found you your wife. Now look, I don't come without importance in this matter. That old man has got your name and address on a piece of paper. Now if he comes to you, you call me at once, you hear? You let me know right away, you hear? Well, I'd say all of this, every item right here, could have been bought in Italy. It's European, anyhow. 
You know, I didn't even turn up an echo of a rumor of a submarine. This is Frank Akal. This is Mel Schaefer and Jack Sage from oh. Immigration. Hi. Nice meeting you. Is that what you've been working on, the illegal entry? Yeah, I was asking a lot of questions of anybody if they had visits from relatives from overseas, strangers, things like that. Nothing. Nothing at all. How'd you make out? I got some more information on McCoglin, Mike. McCoglin? That's the character that was driving the hearse at the time of the accident? Yeah. Oh, uh, this is Adam Flint. Mel Schaefer from Immigration. Oh, hi, Hello, Mel. Adam. Yes, we know each other. Right. Jack Sage. Jack, how do you do? Jack works with me. Fine. Now, what about this McCoglin? Well, Mikey was running a freelance hearse rental service, pick up and deliver for anybody at hiring. Evidently, there's some sort of a need for that with small undertakers. However, according to the permits issued to him, he did business primarily with uh, 12 to 20 particular undertakers. Did you check up on it? No, I didn't. I uh, thought I'd go over to his house first and see the wife, but she was out. The superintendent said she was taking a Thursday hula dancing lesson. Hula dance? Yeah. Well, that's the picture, boys. Anything happens, we'll get in touch with you. You know, last year we caught 200 illegal entrants. How many we didn't catch, what proportion of the total that 200 represents, I couldn't begin to tell you. Well, if we turn anything up, we'll keep... Bye. Good. Right. Right. Mel, I'll nice see you again. Jack, nice see you again. You know, I think the best lead we got is McCartland's wife. I think we ought to see her, and then I think we ought to check up on all the undertakers that he did business with, one by one. Right. Hey, Mike! What? Mike, did... Did you ever taste heroin in the tip of your tongue? Heroin? Yeah! about that? Look, look at that. Every one of them's got it in there. Policeman, Mr. Venussi. This is Mr. Dominic Venussi. How do you do, Mr. Venussi? Uh, tell the people that I won't be long. Uh, gentlemen, you come at a very bad time for me, but all right, what can I do for you? Uh, Mr. Venussi, a cadaver was scheduled to be delivered to you this morning by the Harry McCoglin Hearst Rental Service. Uh, McCoglin? No. You sure about that? Well, sure, I'm sure. What, what do you think? I don't know my business. Mr. Venusi, you keep records. Of course I keep records. I gotta keep them. That's the law. May we see your records? Uh, some other time, maybe. Uh, right now, I'm entertaining some people. It's got to be now, Mr. Venusi. Well, if you don't mind, I'm celebrating an important occasion, you know? Mr. Venusi, we have a search warrant. Well, <laughs> all right, if that's the way it's gonna be. Here's the book with all of my pickups and deliveries. Here, today's record, gentlemen, please. Thank you. Yeah. We're satisfied? Just a moment. Not quite, Mr. Venusi. I'm afraid you're going to have to come around the precinct and answer a few questions. Do you have any objections? Well, of course I got objections. I told you before, I got company. Now, please, some other time. This is an important occasion for me. It's an anniversary of my wife's death. I got guests in the house. The girl that my son is going to marry. Her mother and father are here. Please, don't embarrass me, huh? It's got to be now, Mr. Venusi. Can I go upstairs and excuse myself? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Venusi, don't take too long. I wouldn't like to have to come after you.
Good morning. Now, breakfast. As I understand, the chef is very proud of a salami omelet. I don't guarantee it, though, because I'm new here myself. Café? Hmm. Oh, yeah, coffee. Well, do you want anything else? Café. Okay. How you doing, honey? I'm never gonna make it. Half of them only speak Italian. I think this is what he ordered. I'll handle it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have you ordered another del cafe? Grazie, grazie. Se volete qualche cosa mi chiami. Grazie. C'è un'altra cosa che posso fare per lei? Sì, questo indirizzo. Potete dirmi come si va? Sì, non è molto lontano. Volete farmi il favore di indicarmi la via? Sì, certamente. Qua c'è bocche, di quella parte. Eh? Sì. Oh sì. Va bene, già. Eh, un momento. Il caffè. Basta. Molto grazie, no? Eh, eh, What's with him? He got lost. He's on his way to a funeral. Well, man. Because you were kind to the old man. Una lira. Do you know how much that is? One lira? One sixteenth of a cent. Venusi! Abita qui, Venusi! Certo, lì, proprio io lì! Signor Venusi! Signor Venusi! I don't know about you, but I have a legitimate business to go to. Now, you tell me what it's all about. Sam, Why are you asking me all these questions about McCarthy? Just sit still, Mr. All right. Oh. We'll tell you what it's all about. Please. Take a look at this. Familiar? No, sir. How about that? Made in Italy. So? Very nice. What has that got to do with me? I haven't been in Italy since I was a boy. Mm -hmm. All these articles were in this bag. Mm. Including this. Very nice. All came from Italy. How about that? You can buy that in any Italian store in New York City, my friend. This kind? Yes, sir. Sure, huh? Now, why don't you try one and see, Mr. Venusi? Go ahead, Mr. Venusi. Why don't you try one? What do you want to have a pop? All right. Salute. You know what's inside? Sure, I know what's inside. I'm in Zanisset. All right, sugar. It's not sugar. That's heroin. Well, you mean, you mean dope? Yeah, dope. Now, what do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Venusi? trying to do. I'm a naturalized oh, American citizen. I'm a respectable... Look out. Just take it easy. All right. I'll go myself. All right. Just take it easy. I'm sorry I lose my temper, but you know, you say things like that. Okay, okay. Come on.
think he knows anything about the heroin. Well, that's the way he acts anyway. Maybe he's just a good actor. Well, one thing is sure. A Coglin had him listed to deliver that coffin to. And if that coffin was supposed to go to an undertaker's office carrying a live cargo, then that undertaker would have to know something about it. Well, maybe somebody working for him was handling it while Venusi wasn't there. No, Mike, it's not that kind of a business. It's a kind of an operation where Venusi would have to be in on everything personally. I tell you what, let's leave it neutral whether or not uh, Venusi knows anything about the heroin in this candy. But he has to know something about the man in the coffin. Okay, Taylor. Right. Mr. Venusi. Hey, Mr. Venusi, look how dead he is. Hey, Mr. Venusi, he ain't moving. Ain't you gonna bury him? Hey, hey, yeah, the man. Yeah, the man. I guess he's a pazza. I got a new power on my Mr. Venusi. What you bugger did you say, Mamma? Get out of here! Oh, my one got a new power. Just a cure respect, my key. Frank, maybe you'd better go around the corner, cover the place in the rear. Okay? Hey. Mr. Venusi, there's an old man keeps asking for you. I put him in the chapel. Oh, I don't want to see anybody. You take care of his man. Well, he only speaks Italian. He doesn't speak any English. I don't want to talk to anybody. He's very upset, Mr. Venusi. Somebody very close must have died to make an old man this upset. Salvatore Rogero. Rogero? Salvatore Rogero. You dare come to me? from me. You tell me one thing. Did you bring those candies with you? Avete portato i dolci con voi? Sì, sì. Ma li ho perduti. Lo sapevo che erano per voi. Did you know what was in those candies? Do you? Non importa, io parlerò con Matteo. Sì, sì. I dolci sono per Matteo. I will speak with Matteo. Che dite? Io parlare con Matteo. Sì, sì. I dolci sono per Matteo Valentino. I will speak with him.
know the police paid me a visit to the Victorian church. Yeah. They dragged me down to the station. They asked me a lot of questions. The fine Senor Rogero. What about the suitcase and the candy? Aren't you going to ask me about that? What about the candy? What about the candy? Hey, what do you pick me for? You tell me about that candy, you... Dominic, please, let me explain. Yes, you explain! I couldn't help it. I don't have a regular trade like you. To make a buck, this is what I have to do. Passports, visas, find immigrants' jobs, fix crazy, lousy traffic tickets, even find wives in the old country. That's no explanation. What, do you want to make a criminal out of me? Huh? I'm a respectable, naturalized American citizen. All right, so I try to help an old man. You're trying to make a dope peddler out of me. Goodbye, please. I'm not alone in this. My friends are pretty mad about the candy. Uh, so tell them to go to the police, not me. Police have the candy? What do you think? Police have Rogero? Why are you so interested in Senor Rogero all of a sudden? Not me. My friends, them. I told you that the police have the candy. Why are you so interested in Senor Rogero all of a sudden, huh? You tell me why. Why, why? How do I know why? All I know is I got my orders. Find Senor Rogero. That's no explanation. You tell me why. All right. Suppose the police find the old man. They ask a lot of questions. Who made the arrangements for the passage? Who made the arrangements for the delivery of the candy? Things like that. Find that old man. Bring him to me. Hey, you a murderer, Matt. You're just a cheap killer, that's what you are. I'm not gonna touch him. I'm just gonna bring him to my friends. All you do is deliver him to your friends. You don't care what happens to him? Dominic, he's just one old man. What does he want? How much of his life has he got left? Where does everybody has to get ruined for one nobody old man? I'll tell you something and you better tell that to your friends. This is not an old man, he's safe with me. With you, huh? You listen to me, Dominic. You bring that old man to me, see? Or I tell your son Angelo the truth about his mother. Make the identification. Huh? You gotta tell me everything. All I can tell is. There's nothing to tell. Why did she die? She was sick. Well, how was she sick? Huh? Matt, you've got to tell me everything. How was she sick? Why did she die? It was not your fault. How did she die? Dominic, she was become this kind of woman. She was drunk. She fell in the garden. They found her dead in the street. What else do you want to hear? Nothing. Why, why she don't come to me? I have the greatest love for her. I have the greatest love to make a home for her. I have the greatest respect. Dominic, 
We go home now, huh? Pobre. You got a little son waiting for you. Pobre, pobre, pobre. It's because of these hands that she leave me. These hands that not touch the dead, yes. I destroy these hands. I break. I break these hands. No, 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 no. You got a little boy home. He's got nobody but you, Dominic. Nobody but you. He's got no mother now, Dominic. You gotta be both his mother and his father. You're not gonna leave him alone now, huh? No. 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 Angelo must never know, you understand, Gumba? Nobody must ever know, you understand? Well, who, who's, who's gonna tell, huh? Who's gonna know? Just you and me, Gumba, huh? You forget that this little boy is your son, but he's also my godson. You promise, you swear. I swear. You're no longer a part of my life. I have never known you. thinking what to do. Papa, one time you said to me, Angelo, you got something on your mind? Come talk with me. I'm never going to tell you you're foolish. I'm only going to say, how can I help you? I said that. I say the same to you now, Papa. When I speak, you will be the first one in the whole world. I'll hold you to that, Papa. Crazy, crazy. Sick. Old man. Why should I give up everything just for a sick old man? Give him to Matt. Wash my hands. Salute. <laughs> Salute. Did you say? I will not teach you. Hey, what are you? Hmm? A 
half dead old man anyway. Mad as rags. Give it to Why don't I do as he says? I should do what Matt says. Give it to Senor Revolution. You want to see your son, huh? Eh, voglio andare a vostro figlio. Oh, mio figlio, sì. Sì, sì. sì. You want to see your son. But uh, tonight, old man, you'll sleep in jail. Uh, I'm sorry, but there's no other way. Che dite, signore Venusia? Che dite? È tempo di andare adesso, il figlio aspetta. Oh, eh? oh. Grazie, grazie, grazie. Hey, hey Adam, how about you taking a look back for a while? My dog's ache. Okay, Brian. Hold it, hold it. Hey, you see that car just pull up there? Yeah. You recognize the guy sitting next to the driver? No, I can't make him out. It's Anders. It's Hollinger's delivery boy. Anders? Yeah. I wonder what he's doing around here. I don't know, but... I keep an eye on him. Understand now? Big Dominic Ivan. Understood? Understood. Mr. Hollinger gave me his word. Okay, he gave you his word. What's the matter with you, Mr. Anders? Don't no joke, please. The old man is one thing, but I can buy Dominic, he's something else. I could fish. Dominic, he's a something else. You know, you make a bargain with the devil, he kills you. about mom. I've known since I was ten years old. You knew. 
I wouldn't dishonor your respect for her. Papa, what you told me, that was my mother. The only mother I ever knew was the one you made up for me. Thank you. Understand? million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. from Columbia Pictures, produced by Herbert B. Leonard. <laughs>